Hey everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Vanessa and you are watching the Exploring Oracle or the Exploracle for short. So if this is your first time here, what I usually do is I show you a deck from my personal collection and then we talk about the cardstock, how it shuffles, I show you all of the art, and I do have timestamps down below if you're just interested in a particular part, feel free to just click on that link. Anyway, so today it is February and we will be taking a look at this in the tarot deck called the Tarot of Aphrodite. So it comes in this box. It's a bit of a glossy box. Um, it says in the back, an homage to the Divine Feminine, femininity and fine art. The Tarot of Aphrodite is the answer for all lovers of the fine arts, vintage and women. An exquisite creation of sensual art while keeping the integrity of the traditional tarot, this 79-card deck is ideal for everyone. No matter if you're a newbie or a long-time tarot reader, let yourself be touched by the gentle beauty of Venus. So this, I believe, is a Kickstarter. Initially a Kickstarter. This is already the second edition. I didn't back any of the Kickstarter versions, but when I saw it on sale already in the creator's website, I did jump at the chance because I was really drawn to the art. Now, it has this like open type box, which is not my favorite because I'll show you. Uh, it, I don't think that it's secure. So if you actually do it here, see it's already opening. And I don't think that this would hold up uh, if you keep opening it and closing. It's just going to be quite loose and not secure. I do still prefer two-part boxes with thumb cut cutouts or um, magnetic, magnetic clamshell boxes. But on the inside, it does say Aphrodite, Goddess of Love Divine. With you are hearts and souls entwined. May your blessings be upon us all as we answer to love's eternal call. And I do really like that. Uh, it comes with a guidebook. And uh, let me also show you. The inside of the box is also glossy. Coated in this glossy um, coating. And it does tend to make the cards stick at the bottom. Now I wish there was a ribbon to help because... <laughs> You can see here that my Ten of Coins is stuck at the bottom and I can't really get it out. Hold on. Okay, so I managed to pry off the, the bottom card, my Ten of Cups. So let's put, that, let's put that there and this is what the inside of the box looks like. Okay, and then let's take a quick look at the guidebook. So it is quite a chunky guidebook. So you have here the table of contents, a prologue uh, on Aphrodite, the meanings of the, on the meanings and court cards, some spreads, the meanings, and then you go card by card. So there is a page entry for each card, which I do appreciate. I like that. Okay, so I haven't really gone through this deck yet. Uh, so it's pretty much, I looked at the art, but I haven't really looked at the guidebook or anything. So this is the details on Aphrodite, a couple of pages there, meanings of court cards. So, uh, so it should, there are some renamed cards, so the Empress is Aphrodite, the Emperor is Aris, uh, the Wheel of Fortune is the Fates, the Hangman is Stillness, and then for the court cards, the pages are renamed Princess, and Knights are Priestess. Then you have some spreads. And then you go into the meanings. For each card, there seems to be an affirmation. Uh, so there is uh, information on the art that was used. And then an affirmation, keywords, and then the meaning. And I think even for the minors, that is how it's set up. So that's good. And that's it. All the way to the end. So there's no no um, information about the creator, about uh, Natasha, Natasha From. So I, I don't think, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but this is created by Natasha From. Okay, so these are the cards. They are gilded in this really beautiful light pink, metallic pink. It is matte. So thankfully, unlike the Unlike the inside of the box or the coating that's glossy, at least I personally prefer it to be matte, and it is matte. The backs are reversible. I think the first edition of this deck 
uh, it didn't have a reversible back for those who are interested in using reversals. Okay, so so what what else do I add? Ah, uh, yeah. So cardstock, it's matte, but it it does snap back really well. It feels really good and sturdy. So I do like the cardstock used here. Okay, so oh, uh, you also have a title card here, Tower of Aphrodite, the second edition. This is copyright 2023. All right. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the cards. So let's take a closer look at the cards. So they do have this border and then the name of the card at the bottom. So the Fool is also renamed Birth. It wasn't noted in the guidebook, but this was also renamed. And you do have a number at the top. So I love, there is nudity on this deck, um, but that doesn't really bother me. Uh, but if it does uh, bother you, this might not be the the video for you because there is a lot, quite a lot of nudity on this deck. I do still think that it is tastefully done, but I know that some people are sensitive to that. So um, you might want to skip this video if it bothers you. And here's the Empress, Aphrodite, and our Emperor, Ares. Now, I'm just, I was just really drawn to the art here. Um, when I first saw the, the first Kickstarter, I was already tempted, but um, I wasn't sure, you know, because I find it really beautiful, but I wasn't really sure I would connect. I don't know, I'm like that with this type of art, um, or at least decks that use, um, use existing art, pre-existing art to... To convey the tarot card meanings and it being all about aphrodite i was also really hesitant <laughs> um yeah but this is the second edition so when the initial kickstarters rolled out i think there was some feedback and it had bigger borders and the creator released this second edition kickstarter to address some of those feedback which i really appreciate creators doing and again, I was tempted, but didn't exactly pull the trigger um, the second time around when I saw it on Kickstarter. But I'm really happy that now I do have this copy because I just really like how it looks. You know, the art here, um, very, very beautiful. I think it's aesthetically pleasing, at least to me. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, most of my viewers are also drawn to this art style, but I, this isn't my typical art style uh, that I'm drawn to. I usually go for watercolors, but yeah, something about this, and even though it's all using images uh, of Aphrodite, <laughs> uh, I, I do think that the way it is used in the, in the tarot, um, it's quite effective. So it was able to convey the meaning of the card star so what have you guys been up to uh it's 2024 second month already can you believe it my january was quite busy uh i went to singapore at the latter part of the of the month to watch cool play and to visit my sister and when we got back when we got back to manila i got sick again and that's why i haven't really been able to read cards because I don't know, but when I'm sick, I just, I feel, I, I don't really feel comfortable um, handling or using my decks. So I, I think it was, you know, because when on vacation, you're busy, you don't really have enough time to, to read. And I was, um, and then when I got back, when I got sick, it's been about almost two weeks since I started really reading or using my cards. And, and now I'm really looking forward to using this deck. But before that, I wanted to show you because, you know, uh, February, love month, Aphrodite, goddess of love. I think they're a match. You know, I, it, this is a perfect time to use it. <laughs> okay, let's go into the minors. So you have here the ace of wands, two of wands. The Three of Wands, Four of Wands, very celebratory feeling, Five of Wands, Six of Wands, Seven of Wands. You know, I've been getting sick 
a lot lately. Um, for some reason, during the height of the pandemic, you know, from 2021 to 2023, I barely got sick. And then when I when COVID finally caught up to me and I got sick last November, I've been sick every month since. And I, I hope that changes. I'm filming this on the 9th of February, which is the eve of the Lunar New Year. And I'm hoping that in this new year, in the coming new year, my health status changes because I, I, I really don't want to get sick. I hate feeling sick and, you know, being sick for like three months in a row, that, that really sucks. So, the, uh, so for the courts, it starts with the queen and then the king, princess, and priestess. Now, I do have to read on the guidebook but if that actually means anything different or it's really just the order that this deck came in. Um, I haven't really shuffled this, so I'm just showing you how it was um, delivered. And then you have to the suit of cups, ace of cups, two of cups, three, four of cups, Five of Cups, Six of Cups, Seven of Cups, Eight of Cups. As always, feel free to slow down, speed up, or pause if you want to take a closer look at the cards. Ten. Then, oh! And then you go into the... Okay, so I'm confused. <laughs> I'm sorry I was babbling on and I didn't notice the order. So I think... Oh yeah, so we already finished the ones. Okay, so it always starts with the courts of the suit. So you have here the Queen of Swords, the King of Swords, the Princess, and the Priestess. But supposedly the Princess is the page... Yeah, it, it. Let's not mind the order much. <laughs> Let's just take a look at the cards and the art. And yeah, we'll shuffle later and read from the guidebook. Okay, you have the Two of Swords. It's like you have your conscience talking to you, making you make that decision or convincing you which decision to take. Three of Swords. Four of Swords. Five of Swords, Six of Swords. So if you do like art or this type of art, I think the choices here are really beautiful. I really like it. I don't know how it reads yet, but I can just, you know, I primarily started collecting tarot because of the art. So even if it, I think even if it doesn't read well for me, I might just still keep it because I love the art. And let's move on to our last suit, the coins, queen of coins, king of coins. Then you have the princess, the priestess, ace of coins, two of coins, Three of coins, four of coins, five of coins, six of coins, seven of coins, eight of coins, nine of coins, and the ten. Okay, so zooming out, let's see how this deck shuffles. So yeah, it's still a little bit stiff, but it riffle shuffles well. Um, yeah, as with any new deck in a like a thicker but a uh, sturdy cardstock it is a, a bit stiff when you start shuffling it but I think this would 
shuffle nicely once I've broken it in. For the overhand, oops. Uh, okay, so yeah. Yeah, I think it also slides well. Doesn't seem to, to clump badly. Yeah, I think this is a nice shuffle. Okay, and we'll, oh, there's two cards, so let's read for this one. Let's read for Two of Wands. And let me just pick the guidebook. Oh, I opened right to the page. <laughs> so the Two of Wands, uh, the art is by, with a, uh, the art is by William Adolf Banker, Banjero. Oh my gosh, I cannot read. So the art. And then the affirmation, I confidently embrace the choices before me and trust in my ability to make wise decisions. And then you have your keywords, um, planning, potential, decision making, expansion, vision, choices, future, direction, strategy, and discovery. And for the meaning, it says, here we see a young woman holding on to one wand, her other hand gently touching the corner of her mouth. The gesture suggests a sense of contemplation and indecisiveness. The girl is deep in thought, considering different options and possibilities before making a choice. The Two of Wands reflects a stage of uncertainty and the need for careful deliberation. It reminds us that decision-making is not always easy, and sometimes we find ourselves at a crossroads, unsure of which direction to take. The girl's expression conveys a sense of curiosity and a desire to explore different paths before committing to one. This card serves as a reminder to pause and reflect before making important decisions. It encourages us to take the time to understand our options fully and consider the potential outcomes. The indecisiveness depicted in the card is not a sign of weakness, but rather a call to explore all perspectives and possibilities. So I do like how, that, um, how the guidebook is written. I think that it gives you the message, it gives you an affirmation, it even tells you the keywords, and it would be a good resource if you're just new and learning tarot. It is an indie deck, so I think I got this for about $60. Uh, but yeah, I do really love the art. And actually, I do like the deck. Um, I'm just not sure how it would read yet. Again, this types of um, decks with uh, this type or with pre-made art, sometimes it just doesn't read well for me. But again, I do love the art on this deck and I think, and I am quite excited to use it, especially during this month. Uh, I think I probably would be using this for love readings um, because what else do you do in February? <laughs> Um, but I, I mostly just read for myself, so I'm just curious about what, what, uh, what's in store for me this month. And uh, it's a really nice deck, really sophisticated, really Venusian, Aphrodite-like, really beautiful. I think that's all. I can ask for in a deck called Tarot of Aphrodite. Now, it um, some people have been saying that it is similar to the, um, I think it's an out of print deck called the Oracle of Delphi. Uh, I think that deck was really quite popular and was out of print before I even started going to Tarot. So there's a lot of excitement with this deck. And, and I can understand why, you know, it's really, really beautiful, really stunning. So as always, I will be linking the site where I got it from in case you are interested to check it out. And that has been the flip through of the Tarot of Aphrodite by um, Nat Natasha From. I hope I'm saying your name right. I hope you find this video helpful and don't forget to click on the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. See you again next time. Bye.